This is Twit. So, uh, Dan Kaminsky uh, cut a wide swath through the computer industry. Um, he was a prolific tweeter um, and a, a real character and personality. He and I were last together. Um, we followed each other on stage during DigiCert's uh, first security conference. And Dan peppered me with some questions about Squirrel back then. Uh, and I was able to satisfy uh, his his many uh, salient questions. Um he was probably first on the map for this podcast when he realized in doing some – just some research that he was always up to that the transactions which the – all of the DNS servers throughout the industry were using had way too little entropy. Their, their port numbers – for the queries they were generating were often sequential, so they were marching through the port space. And often the transaction IDs, which are is a 16-bit number that is used to associate queries with the replies when they come back, those were also sometimes a fixed – well, they weren't a fixed number. Ports were sometimes fixed, but they, the transaction IDs might just be an incrementing counter. And what Dan realized was that – the lack of query entropy being emitted by DNS servers allowed replies to be spoofed. You could ask a DNS server yourself something and see where its counters were and then induce somebody else to ask it a question and provide a spoofed reply before the real reply would get back. And because you knew where the counters were, you were able to, with high accuracy, uh, get a spoof to be accepted as legitimate. And that's, you know, because because the DNS runs over U, uh, UDP, there is no TCP handshake to validate IPs. So you're able to completely spoof the replies. So what this meant was if the world were to... to realize that, as Dan had privately, um, it would be a catastrophe. So Dan privately got in touch with all the purveyors of the various DNS servers. They all recognized what he had. And privately, all of the servers were updated and a, an industry-wide reveal was coordinated in order to maximize the the probability of getting all this fixed with that before the bad guys had a chance to abuse it. So, uh, and of course, because I recognize this was a problem and we covered it on the podcast, we owe Dan the existence of my DNS spoofability service, which I created in honor of his discovery, which allowed in, uh, you know, individuals to go to the, to GRC's DNS spoofability. I, arranged to 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 cause by, by my by setting up my own DNS like pseudo DNS servers I could cause a a visitor to my site's DNS to tr to use me as its resolver and then I collected all the queries that I was inducing through that web page and and analyze the nature of the queries coming from the the DNS servers that they that the user is using. Anyway, um, uh, Dan uh, has a large following. Uh, I think what is it? Uh, I had it here in my notes somewhere. Ninety three oh ninety four point three thousand followers on Twitter. Um, he, as I said, he's a prolific Twitter uh, tweeter. He joined Twitter in 2007. Since then, he has posted 130,000 tweets. Now, if we if we assume an average tweet rate over 14 years, that's 9,285.71 tweets per year. Wow. Or an average of 25.42 <laughs> tweets or commented retweets per day. That's amazing. So if you were following Dan, you you knew what he was thinking and doing. Um, and 
uh, he was also quite literate. Um, he pinned a tweet of his from January 16th, 2018, to the top of his feed. He wrote this. I'm increasingly thinking that every functioning system has two forms. The abstraction that outsiders are led to believe and the reality that insiders actually and carefully operate. You don't incrementally learn a system. You eventually unlearn its necessary lies. <laughs> That's really good. So, and I think you it's know, absolutely right. Absolutely. Just really, really good stuff. Um, he had a site, dankaminsky.com, which was his personal blog. And he hasn't blogged in about four years. But that he his, his last blog, I'll just share a couple of paragraphs from it. Um, he wrote, cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generators, right? We've talked about them a lot, a lot, CSPRNGs, he says, are interesting. Given a relatively small amount of data, just 128 bits is fine, they generate an effectively unlimited stream of bits completely indistinguishable from the ephemeral quantum noise of the universe. The output is as deterministic as the digits of pi, but no degree of scientific analysis, no amount of sample data will ever allow a model to form for what bits will come next. In a way, CSPRNGs represent the most practical demonstration of Gödel's first incompleteness theorem, which states that for a sufficiently complex system, there can be things that are true about it that can never be proven within the rules of that system. Science is literally the art of compressing vast amounts of experimentally derived output on the nature of things to a beautiful series of rules that explains it. But as much as we can model things from their output with math, math can create things we can never model. There can be a thing that is true. There are hidden variables in every CSPRNG, but we would never know. And so, an interesting question emerges. If a CSPRNG is indistinguishable from the quantum noise of the universe, how would we know if the quantum noise of the universe uh -oh. was not itself uh -oh. a CSPRNG? Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. There's an infinite number of ways to construct a random number generator. What if nature tried its luck and made one more? Would we know? Would it be any good? So, anyway, we have wow. lost That's a, beautiful, a, beautiful thing. a critical thinker hmm. uh, among us who made all manner of contributions to uh, security and the Internet. And uh, he was working on some weird JavaScript stuff that I never really tracked. Um, but we have, and I wanted to play it into the podcast so that it is captured, a minute and 45 second video, which he and his young niece produced 13 years ago, uh, niece Sarah, following Black Hat 2008, which was where this the DNS problem uh, was first revealed. Um, so here's, and this is fun because his niece is precocious and 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 following a script that he produced. But it's they made a really fun minute and minute and forty five seconds. I'm security researcher Dan Kaminsky, and I'm here today with my niece Sarah. Hi, everybody. Hey, Sarah. So Sarah here has an important message for all of you. Victor DNS is so important and so cool. Well, what's DNS, Sarah? Well, Uncle Daniel, I think you should know. Be that as it may, why don't you tell the people about their little bit about it? Well, DNS is a domain name system. It tells my computer where on the internet all my favorite websites are. Was well, there something wrong with DNS? It'll be okay. Everyone got together a while back to make sure everything would work out. 
Oh, everybody? Even ISC, the makers of Bind, and Microsoft, and Cisco, and Nama, Nama... You mean Nama? Uh, totally Nama. Well, that's really cool. So, so what should everyone do, Sarah? Well, this is really geeky stuff, but most people should get automatic updates and be okay. Well, who might not? Well, there might be some servers that don't get automatic updates because they're really important and people want to keep an eye on them. Oh, so we should ask those people to take a look? Totally! Oh, well, when should they look? Right now, duh! Well, when do they have to fix it by? Well, the attack is pretty weird, but people will probably figure it out after a month, so I'll give you an exact date. August 6th, 2008. August 6th? August 6th. All right, then. Well, is there any way for the non-geeks to make sure they're safe? Only if you build them a website. Hmm, I'll get right on that. <laughs> you better. Well, thanks, Sarah. And there you have it. Kids, talk to your parents about their DNS. <laughs> They'll be glad you did. All right, that's All a right, wrap. That's a wrap. Cousin Dan, and thank you, Maddie. That is so sweet. Yeah. Oh my God! Oh, I'm sure they miss him terribly. And of course, yeah, uh, his friend Steve been... wrote something in assembly to do that, so it was okay. He didn't have to. He didn't have to do that. <laughs> wow. wow! Wow! Yeah. Wow. Very cool. Oh, um, also, uh, DefCon has announced on their Twitter feed that they're having an online memorial for Dan on Sunday, May second. On there on the DefCon Discord channel, discord.gg slash DefCon. Nice. So nice. Uh, they tweeted, "Come share your favorite stories and join us in celebrating the life of a hacker whose life elevated the whole community." Wow, good. Yep. Uh, thank you for doing that, Steve. Um, yeah. We, of course, we his name comes up all the time on our shows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he'll be missed. Yeah. Good uh, guy.